Back in the days when I lived in Charlotte, North Carolina, I made a lot of trips to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina to do some casino cruises, and I remember the terrain being quite barren and flat and hot, to be honest with you. This drive was actually quite scenic, only a little over an hour, and when I got to Fair Play, I was pleased to find that I was still in the forest. Now, this is Clemson country, and there are a few waterfalls in the area, uh, but other than that, there's not a whole bunch to do. And generally speaking, for whatever reason, whenever I stay at a thousand trails, it's in an area where there's not a whole lot of things to do. Usually that campground is quite nice. This one is certainly no exception. And there are lots of options for staying here besides bringing your own RV for a few nights. For instance, there are some beautiful seasonal sites right on the lake. Don't want to do the RV thing? We'll just get a cabin overlooking Lake Hartwell. But if you prefer a more primitive cabin, they've got those too. I believe this is what you call rustic. Or maybe you don't need a shelter or running water at all. Maybe all you need is that one basic human necessity, a place to plug in your cell phone. So as you can see, there's a little something for everyone here. And if you want to make friends here, it's real easy. All you got to do is offer them a cold beverage. I very much became a homebody here at Carolina Landing because I had everything I needed to do right here in the campground. I shot baskets quite a bit. The clubhouse had direct TV and that's where I watched a lot of my football games. I probably visited the clubhouse about five or six different times and never saw another soul. COVID times, I guess. But this is my favorite part of the campground right here. Uh, this is Lake Hartwell and I think it's pretty famous for its fishing. I think they have a lot of tournaments in the area. Um, and I tell you what, the fishing must be pretty good because I caught two fish in exactly two weeks. But that said, I'm sort of an expert at fishing. I caught a little spotted bass with this piece of bologna. After catching that bass on that piece of bologna, I thought I might have better luck with better bait. So I threw this hot dog in the back of the truck and went down to the lake one day and actually never even got a bite. But I went all out to catch this big catfish. I went to Walmart and got me some stink bait and... I would guess this one would be about seven or eight pounds. What threw me off when I was reeling it in was the color. I thought I maybe I had caught a different species of fish, but it turns out this uh, may be a blue catfish. And, and it's actually the largest species of catfish in North America. Well, my drive from South Carolina to Charlotte was kind of brutal. A lot of sprawling mid-sized cities, one after another after another. And to make things worse, it was almost all construction zones. Uh, so kind of a long day despite it actually being a short drive. Okay, so the power pedestal is on the wrong side. You have an interesting water hookup. And if you want to dump your sewer, you can use this wagon here. It's a little crude, but you know what? These little family campgrounds are everywhere out here near the Speedway, and it's very clear that they were built uh, for the race fans. In fact, if you have really, really good eyes, you can see one of the gates to Charlotte Motor Speedway right here. But even though there's no frills here at Yates Family Campground, that doesn't mean there's no perks. In fact, if you want to visit with the resident cat, he just sort of lets himself in for a visit. You just wander into people's homes? Is that what you do? Huh? Is that what you do? Yeah. You're the resident cat. You just wander into people's homes. Do whatever you want, huh? You're crazy. You're crazy. You're crazy. Oh, yeah, you're crazy and cute. You're crazy and cute. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yeah, you just love her. You're just a lover. Yes, you are. It was really nice to see the Yates family get into the holiday spirit. That kind of got me into the holiday spirit, too. And you better believe I had some pumpkin pie. You know, it's Thanksgiving, and I have a lot to be grateful for. I got through 2020. I'm going to be okay. Uh, we have new leadership come 2021, and uh, we have a rough patch ahead with COVID, but... I think we're going to get through it. I do believe 2021 is going to be a better year. My journey from Harrisburg to advanced North Carolina was short and sweet. You gotta love it.
Well, after catching two fish down in South Carolina in two weeks, I figure I better try to keep that hot streak going, so I got out the fishing pole and went to the lake. Never a single bite. So I walked up to the river for some shore fishing. I found out that fishing on a river with a fast current is very, very difficult. In fact, the current would take your line so fast downstream, uh, you, you wouldn't even know where it went, especially if you're as blind as this river cat. But the one thing I am is patient. I mean, I sat there for about 10 minutes one time just waiting patiently as my bait was laying on the shore the entire time. I think I'd have better luck noodling here. I've seen it on TV. They seem to do all right at it. Uh, but, you know, I barely can stand touching fish, to be honest with you. I can't stand the thought of having an 80-pound catfish swallow my arm. There's lots of nice little wooded trails here at Forest Lake and even a little bit of history. So on my campground map, this is listed as a historic cemetery. And the one person I ran into that knew a little bit about it said that this was a slave cemetery, which makes sense. I mean, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, they were slaves, so they had no choice in the matter but to be buried at a Thousand Trails campground. Could this campground be haunted? Well, is it any coincidence that to this day, Thousand Trails staff members still work for slave wages? No, that's not true at all. I, I completely made that up. Now, this is the tombstone I want. I just wanted to say, River Cat was here and be buried at a Thousand Trails. Now, I've been to many thousand trails in the western half of the U.S., and I knew about their annual sites, but none of them looked like this. I've seen at least a hundred of these in the Carolina Thousand Trails, and I kind of got curious, and I learned that uh, even with your dues, it's still less than half of what an apartment would cost in most cities. Well, this is the Rec Hall, which has a restaurant and a store in it. Um, they, they keep kind of odd hours, but it's been kind of slow since COVID, I guess. And uh, I tell you what, I, th I think everybody wants to support their local businesses. What, when there's a business that's on your campground, I, I think it's even a little bit more intimate and you really want to support them. So, uh, I went at least, um, three or four times in the last week and I highly recommend the grilled cheese and the wings. They're really, really good here. It was really fun to be able to revisit Greensboro and Charlotte, North Carolina. I lived here for about 10 years back in the 90s. It was in Greensboro that I just fell in love with the parks. I had to be at the park all the time, whether it was a date or whether I was playing basketball or, uh, or simply just sitting on a park bench and reading. I did a lot of reading. It was during this time that I really started taking an interest in personal development and, and spirituality, and uh, these parks were a great place to read books like that. It didn't hurt that both the places I lived in Greensboro were right next to parks. In fact, this apartment had a trail that went right down to Battleground Park. I think usually when you see a 20-foot statue of a soldier, you tend to think that he won a major battle. Uh, well, in the case of Nathaniel Green, he actually lost the Battle of Guilford County Courthouse. Now, I've gotten second place many times, but I've certainly never got a trophy for it. It's so hard to believe that I lived here 30 years ago. And the truth be told, I, I ran away from home. I uh, grew up in Illinois, I was socially awkward, and while well, I started to have some good things going for me, I owned a, a business for a couple years and had a nice girlfriend for a while, I just didn't feel at home there. And I literally, within a week of visiting North Carolina, I secured an apartment, a job, and I sold all my stuff at auction in Illinois and left within one week. I was in Greensboro less than two years before I moved down to Charlotte, North Carolina and started my massage practice. 
Uh, this was my uh, first home and office in Charlotte. I eventually expanded my massage practice into a three-room office. This is not it. It's long since been torn down and replaced by a condo community. Well, it's inevitable. Some things change and some things stay exactly the same. Even after over two decades, Freedom Park is exactly like it was then and I was thrilled to see that. I really learned to trust my feelings and my intuition in North Carolina and I knew towards the end of my stay in the 90s that I was going to leave. I knew I was heading that direction. Uh, already I had taken a, a massage practice and turned it into uh, a corporate massage business where I, I had started to travel a lot with it and I knew ultimately I was going to travel full time. In fact this is my last apartment and I moved my office back into this condo because there was so much space and uh, never furnished the whole thing. I furnished it for the two offices. Uh, I didn't even really furnish the bedroom or the living room because I knew that I was gonna become a nomad. I met my gypsy girlfriend on the road. We've spent some time here, but mostly on the road. And then we just hit the road full time. And I'd left Charlotte behind to follow my passion and travel this great country with the love of my life.